Trump continues to roll, leading in the polls, handily, I might add. Not in some places, but everywhere. State polls and national polls. This is Trump saying that he has business interests in the Middle East and he's getting a lot of support for what he's saying. You have, you have big business interests in the Middle East. Yeah. Um, people are wondering why are you continuing to do business in the Middle East if you have such concerns? Because I have concerns great relationships people with people. The I love the Middle East. I love the people of the Middle East. But are you worried about your bottom problem. line being affected by the policy maybe that you're proposing? Look, look, maybe it will be. Who, I mean, look, that's one of those things. What I'm doing now is far more important important and I'm talking about for the Muslims mm -hmm. I'm doing good for the Muslims what I'm doing now is far more important than any particular business I have in the Middle East I'm doing a big favor I was just called by one of the most important people of the Middle East and just said to me Donald you have done a tremendous service to the Muslims because we're making nobody wants to talk about it everybody wants to be so politically correct oh let everybody come in we have a problem, and the problem has to be solved. Dean Obadala, Sirius XM Radio talk show host and Daily Beast contributor, joins us here on Ed Schultz News and Commentary. Well, Dean, a uh, big favor in doing a tremendous service. Your reaction to that? I'm not sure who he's doing a service for, not even for his own campaign. If you look at the poll numbers that came out, yes, within the GOP, according to Bloomberg poll from yesterday, 65% of Republicans support what he's doing, but among all voters, it's completely negative. He's united Republicans to do something I never thought was possible. They stood up from Paul Ryan to Dick Cheney to Jeb Bush. They stood up for Muslims. This is unheard of. I've written so many articles about the GOP demonizing Muslims. Who would have thought less than two weeks after a terrorist attack on our land by Muslims that Donald Trump's rhetoric is so extreme, he's caused good people to say enough is enough. And we're going to stand up and say this is wrong and you can't demonize Muslims like this. So that's the silver lining to me in all of this. So basically Trump is saying, listen to this, trust me. I'm not sure. Trust me what? I, you know, I watched that interview with Don Lemon and Trump saying things like, uh, I love Muslims and Muslims are telling me they like this. Maybe there are. I wrote about for the Daily Beast earlier this week at how Trump does love Muslim money. He's got big partners in Dubai, like Hussein Sejuani, who's a huge multi multimillionaire, where they have the Trump golf course about to open up, the Trump private mansions. They're called Trump private mansions, beginning at a million dollars a pop. So I have no doubt he loves money, Trump. And when he's over there in the Middle East, he says, I love Muslims. When he's here in the U.S. trying to get votes, he says, I don't like Muslims. So, so what are we seeing happen here? You've got 65% of registered Republicans saying that they agree with Trump. Yet you've got the leadership, as you mentioned, from Paul Ryan to one of the godfathers, Dick Cheney, <laughs> godfather of destruction, uh, saying that, no, that's not us. I mean, I think Trump is giving the Republican Party an opportunity to look normal when we all know that they're radical as hell. What do you think? Well, that's a really good point, because, you know, on some level, like, well, the GOP leadership saying this is horrible and this is wrong. And then the rank and file going, no, I love this. Um, it's troubling, but at the same time, I really believe the fact that the establishment Republicans are saying it's wrong will move some of the GOP to go, it's gone too far. Because the Blue Mark poll was very interesting. It showed to only 22% of Republicans opposed it. Then they explained to the Republican people they were polling, well, the leadership of your party has come out against it, world leaders have come out against it, and the number of opposition went from 22 to 28%. So I think the fact the leaders came out and said it was wrong will cause, it'll pick others in the GOP away from supporting the Trump plan. Um, so on some level, again, I'm looking for silver linings here, Ed. It's, it's a horrible plan, what he's saying. The idea, he's clearly demonizing Muslims. This is not about a policy. We all know you can't impose this. What are you going to do? At customs, make people eat a bacon cheeseburger to prove they're not a Muslim? I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's laughable. But it's scary because he's playing on the worst fears. And I think a real leader in a time of fear doesn't play to those fears. They stand up and say, we're united. We're united in our resolve. It's all of us against it's ISIS. It's not all of us against Muslims. And that's what, the, what Donald Trump is saying. And he's a scared man. This is Trump on his position. Are you racist? I am the least racist person that you have ever met. I am the least racist person. Are you bigoted in any way? I don't think? think so. No, I don't think so. Islamophobic? I'm a person, no, not at all. I'm a person who happens to be very smart, and I happen to have a certain street sense, and I know where things are going. Dean, he's smart. He has a street sense. He knows where things are going. 
<laughs> he does, and and he knows to you. He may not personally be an anti-Muslim bigot. I wrote an article for CNN that came out last night. I'm more afraid of Trump supporters than I am Donald Trump. He may or may not believe any of this. Nobody knows. The reality is his supporters do. And he's touching into that. He's, he's legitimizing their fears, legitimizing their hate, and sadly can radicalize and inspire them to commit acts of violence. That's my greatest fear. We saw it in the Civil Rights Movement. George Wallace said segregation today, tomorrow, and forever. There were bombings in Birmingham shortly after that against black churches, against black leaders. It's not a vacuum. We know the history. Politicians' words mean something. And when they're demonizing people, when they're legitimizing hate, the next step could be more than voting. Yeah. It could be bullets. There's one more political facet to all of this that I think needs some discussion, and that is what Donald Trump is doing is the best thing that ever happened to Hillary Clinton. You know, do you, do you know where Bernie Sanders was yesterday in the news? He was on page A30 in the New York Times. Sanders well, gets very little attention because Trump is sucking all the air out of the room. And yet there's this conventional political wisdom out there. Oh, Hillary's got it. Although there's a poll in New Hampshire showing that Sanders leads by 10%. He's having a hard time getting attention. Got very little attention for going to Baltimore a couple of days ago, talking to the faith leaders there and talking to the leaders of the African-American community. Do we remember what happened in Baltimore? And there's a trial going on there now, Freddie Gray. I mean, Bernie is out there addressing the key issues, getting very little right. attention because he, he doesn't, I guess, have the Hollywood swagger or the <laughs> contemporary swagger, however you want to look at it. But the fact is, is that his base is still with him. It's still very strong. And I don't think it's a lock for Hillary. Your thoughts? Well, I agree. And that new poll, which showed that Hillary was down by 10 points in New Hampshire, is very interesting a couple of days ago. But Trump has supped up, supped up the oxygen for everyone. When's the last time you heard about Hillary's email? server issue, or Benghazi, um, or real political policy issues from Bernie Sanders. Trump has dominated the news to a point where we don't talk about anything at all um, besides this very issue. And it's unfortunate. Um, at some point, the media will become, in my dreams, they'll become responsible, responsible like you, covering substantive issues. But they, you know, they're about ratings, they're about clicks, and substantive issues don't get clicks, but this kind of reality show politician world does get a lot of people talking, and they're going to keep covering that, and we'll never hear about the issues until the election is over, perhaps. And that would be scary. Dean Obadala joining us here on Ed Schultz News and Commentary. All the best on your show. Thanks, keep it Ed. going. Thank you, Appreciate Dean. Appreciate it.